Hello everyone, I'm Adam Olvis, the Forester Specialist for Dane County. Uh, if you didn't know what a Forester Specialist is, we take care of your county forests and individual trees. Um, a little bit about myself and what we do here at the county. Um, part of our job is uh, risk management, um, and that is in both the concept of what you might think uh, a forester or an arborist would do is trees are large heavy objects that can fall on you and kill you, so we try to mitigate that as much as we can. Uh, we take care of trees, make sure that there's no uh, hazard or risk to the public, uh, public property, um, anybody coming into our parks. The other end of that job is to mitigate risk on a large scale. So I'm sure you've heard of emerald ash borer, um, and that has an impact on the entire forest system of Dane County. So we look at diversifying and how we can minimize risks to uh, the health of the native forest in Dane County. So today we're at Mendota County Park. Um, some may ask why we're here. Um, Mendota County Park is a more urban park in our county system, uh, but also is uh, a good demonstration of the issues that uh, the urban forests in general and some of the county forests are dealing with nowadays. Um, so Mendota County Park was designed many, many years ago, 50, 60 years ago. And so some of those design features have led to more uh, tree issues than some of the other park systems we have. Um, Mendota County Park uh, was about 75% ash tree uh, or planted in ash population, which makes sense because ash trees grow really well near the, near the water until we have something like uh, emerald ash borer come through and uh, either wipe out or create stressors for 75% um, of our population. The remaining portion of the park uh, has been planted in groups. So we have silver maples uh, planted near the campground on the northern end, uh, very concentrated. We have oaks planted in, in the uh, western end of the park. Um, the remainder being filled in with mostly ash, or what used to be ash, and cottonwoods that are behind me. The issue we have there was uh, if a disease or pest gets into a section, um, we lose the majority of those trees, or we have to spend a significant amount of money trying to prevent the loss of those trees. The oak trees behind us uh, have what we currently have Baroque blight. They have had infestations of oak wilt, um, which would require removals and trenching and expensive uh, resources to try to keep that, those trees alive. Uh, the silver maples on the north end are all over mature. They're all aging out about the same time. Um, they don't uh, have a lot of stuff growing underneath it. Uh, we are underplanting them to prevent uh, massive loss of canopy, but at some point in time, we're gonna start losing a larger number of those trees as well. Um, so proper planting and diversity uh, is, a, is a challenge at this park. So we're planting uh, thousands of trees a year uh, in the park system. A lot of those trees are actually going to Mendota, Mendota County Park to alleviate some of the, uh, the risk uh, that this park has um, from pest diseases and whatnot. When choosing a tree to plant, um, one of the best things you can do if you're planting a tree at your house um, is to look at what trees your neighbors have and pick one that they don't. Um, we're trying to diversify trees as much as we possibly can. Um, the goal here in Dane County is to plant no more than any, uh, no more than 5% of any one species, 10% uh, of any one genus. So in uh, layman's terms, what that means is uh, if we we're planting oaks, we plant no more than 10% of oak um, and 5% of, let's say, burrow, for instance. So um, we, we diversify as much as we can. We have a really cool program. It's called the gravel bed program within the county that allows us to plant thousands of trees with less staff load and a significantly reduced cost. Um, if you're interested in volunteering or partnering, uh, we would gladly use your help for that. So when we come to planting a tree, um, you want to dig a hole that's uh, at least one and a half times the width of your uh, root ball. Uh, in this case, I use a stump grinder because uh, you use what you have. It makes some nice, really uh, fine soil. Um, when you're planting a tree, you want to look for where the top of the root, the, the, the uppermost structural root. In this case, when we're planting this tree, we want to make sure that we're not planting uh, too deep or realistically too high. Um, so what we're looking for is whether you're planting bare root or you're planting uh, ball and burlap or containerized trees, we want to make sure that uh, the uppermost structural root, which is the large root that's going to come off of it, is at the top of your uh, your planting planting hole. Okay. If you plant too deep and soil gets up up high, the roots will eventually grow up and can girdle the tree. We call that stem girdling roots. Um, if you plant too high, you have a tendency for the tree to dry out um, and whatnot. The other important thing is when this tree will eventually need to be mulched, we want to make sure that the mulch is not too high on the tree. We call that a donut ring. Um, we have some nice photos to, to kind of to show you that. Um, a thing that gets a lot of people when planting trees is they assume when they are pulling, especially on a ball and burlap or a containerized tree, they assume that this section here, what we call a grafting joint, 
um, is uh, the top of the root ball. Uh, in fact, most trees that you buy are actually two trees that have been uh, fused together. Um, so this crab apple, for instance, they took a root stock that they preferred and then they butted into it and now you have two trees that are joining. This is not the top of the roots. The top of the roots is going to be the uppermost structural root you have. Um, so you want to plant at the top of that, fill it in. You do not want to pound down or pack this in um, because we don't want to compress the soil more than we need to. So oftentimes we get questions about staking trees. Um, uh, one of them is, do all trees need to be staked? And the answer is no. Um, in some cases, uh, the tree will be a little wobbly or doesn't have a lot of structural support when it's been planted. Bare root tend to be a little bit more wobbly when you plant them, so you put stakes on them. Important things to keep in mind when you're putting stakes on, you don't want anything sharp or uh, too small on the bark itself because it can cut it, it can compress it. Um, you want them just on enough to keep it straight and upright. Um, we generally don't keep stakes on trees for any, lo any longer than a year. Um, six months is even better. Um, trees need to have that movement and sway for them to develop nice root flare. Um, if they don't, and you leave stakes on too long, they'll start to become weak right above where the stake is attached, where the attachment point is, and they'll break off. Uh, the other question we oftentimes get about tree planting is, uh, should you prune when you plant a tree? Ideally, no. The only thing that you should prune off a tree uh, when you plant it is if there's broken or damaged limbs. In this case, this Adam's crab is looking very nice. There's no broken limbs. Uh, we want to leave as much leaf structure on this tree as we can to develop the roots finally. We talked about pruning with a small tree that's been planted. Ideally, we want a tree to develop itself, get established before we start doing any kind of pruning. Um, there's a lot of different modes and methods of pruning. Uh, if you're really interested in taking a pruning class, you know, we have those available. Um, but for just the, the small pruning or like the structural pruning that you might be interested in doing, we're just going to go over a few tips. So uh, if you aren't familiar with what this tree is, this is Ginkgo biloba. So if you've ever taken uh, that as a supplement, this is the tree it comes from. Um, it will only come from the female version. Uh, we don't plant the female version in the county parks, uh, primarily because the seeds smell awful. Uh, they have the same chemical that's in vomit. So they smell like vomit if you plant them. So being nice to all of our park, our park uh, um, patrons, we avoid the stinky vomit smelling trees. Um, but, uh, so there are a few structural issues with this tree. We got some crossing branches here, some goofy looking limbs over on this side. Um, I'm just gonna talk about pruning with uh, hand pruners or your shears. Um, if you're gonna be pruning a tree or any shrub, make sure that you're using what's called an anvil pruner or uh, a bypass pruner. Uh, anvil pruning will actually crush the limb. A bypass pruner will actually make nice quality cuts. So when you're cutting, you wanna cut with the, uh, the, the cutting side facing the limb that you're making that cut so you don't leave any stubs. Uh, I'm going to take off this little limb right here. Even if it's a little goofy, again, cutting side is facing towards me or towards, towards the branch and make a nice clean cut. Uh, in this case, I have a structural limb that's uh, eventually as the tree grows, it's going to become uh, problematic for it. So once again, cutting side facing the tree or my final cut, I will remove that. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but uh, what you can cut with your hand shears should be no bigger than the pinky finger. So um, don't put your pinky finger in there, but uh, that'll give you an idea of what you can cut with a hand shear or hand pruner. Take another limb here. Um, the other question you'll oftentimes get is how much can you prune out of a tree uh, for the health of it when they're young, 25% maximum. Uh, as a tree gets older, uh, ideally you'll be working with an arborist or something that's professional working on an older tree like that because I don't want you guys up in ladders or climbing, um, but we reduce that amount because the trees are getting older and they don't have the ability to respond as well to um, the, the removal of living tissue. I'm gonna take a few more cuts off. Again, we have, we have some nice scaffolding branches here. These eventually will go away. We'll take those off. Again, always making sure that I'm avoiding uh, cutting too deep in, uh, but not leaving subs by having the proper angle on my hand burners. This eventually will run into the trees. We'll take that off. One's fine. Once again, if you are interested in um, learning a little bit more about pruning, uh, either Dane County Parks uh, through Forestry or uh, with UW Extension, we teach pruning classes. Um, we can teach you a little bit more about structural pruning and what to look for uh, when you're when you're cleaning up trees. Uh, that being said, majority, that's pretty good. There's not a whole lot above head height that needs to come off. This is a really nice X-current tree. What I mean by that is it's got a very strong uh, dominant leader 
and uh, so it goes straight up. Pine trees, spruces, those things are called X current um, in our bio, uh, botany lingo. Um, oftentimes they have better structure. The uh, flowering crab that we planted earlier has what we call decurrent, and so we'll have multiple limbs that go out. Oftentimes they require significantly more pruning to maintain proper structure. One of the more unique things that I think uh, County Parks and County Forestry really have really done uh, is we started installing uh, fruit orchards in a number of our parks. You know, we have a lot of county land, and how can we improve the many and bringing people in the park system? Uh, so we started installing fruit trees in a number of our park systems, in orchard base, or orchard systems, or just in the general landscape. Um, so some of the trees we planted are apple trees, we've done pear trees, we've got apricots, plums, um, peaches, um, you know, cherries. We have a lot of different variety that we're planting. Um, they're beneficial in a lot of ways. They're good for the wildlife, um, both from an, uh, mammalian wildlife, they're good for birds, they're good for insects and pollinators, but they're also really great for our communities. It's a sense of community, people can come here, they can actually uh, select fruit from our park system uh, and bring it home. We have a number of orchards within uh, the county parks. The best place to find out where you can forage and get, uh, get fruit or anything edible within the park system is uh, the, for the foraging page on, at Dane County Parks. Uh, the other components of uh, what forestry at Dane County Parks does is we provide training. We provide training for our friends, our volunteers, our partners, uh, and if people are interested in training, they can sign up to become a volunteer or a partner um, to, to join in that oftentimes free training that we provide. Uh, some of the trainings that we, we do offer, uh, if you want to get your pesticide applicator license, um, so if you're applying uh, herbicides on county parks or even for your job, um, and you're doing it in partnership with the parks, we provide free training for that. Uh, chainsaw training, we have number of levels of chainsaw training. Um, there are thousands of acres of lands that are need to be managed. Uh, we do not have enough full-time operational staff to do that, so we rely on volunteers. So we provide uh, multi-level chainsaw training for volunteers and partners. Um, we provide planting opportunities if you want to learn more about how to plant trees. If you want to learn more about pruning, like I said earlier, we, we do trainings with both UW Extension, uh, the Master Gardeners program, and through uh, Dane County Park itself. The level of training that we do or program that we have from the forestry end of, of parks operations uh, is we work with Operation Fresh conservation crews uh, to provide uh, employment level training, skills that uh, OFS students can take from their OFS time and time working with us and take that on to uh, develop um, career relatable skill sets. Um, so we provide chipper training, again more chainsaw training, rigging, uh, pruning, uh, access to using some heavy equipment like stump grinders. Um, they help us out with planting fruit orchards. The nice part of the program that we have is the students while they're in the OFS program going through this training they get pre-apprenticeship credits, um, so if they want to continue on in urban forestry or urban forestry related field, uh, and there's an apprenticeship, they don't have to go. They don't have to be in the apprenticeship as long. They get credits accordingly for it. Uh, and also with the new urban forestry program at Madison College, the students that are currently working with us at Dane County Parks are getting college credits. So if they want to continue going forward uh, with that program, um, they don't have to take as many classes. They get a head start on it. We also provide opportunities within the parks from a graduate pers perspective. So if OFS graduate is really interested in that, uh, they can work with us. We help students get their driver's license, or CD, uh, commercial driver's license as well, um, which is a, a real tool that can open up a lot of doors for young people to continue with their careers.